and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Bree. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, John Bishop and Russell Howard, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Sarah Milliken. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of Prime Minister Gordon Brown in buoyant mood, but what does ROCB stand for? Is it what he looks like when he smiles? Is it really old, creepy baby? <laughs> <laughs> is he just it's really to... desperate about his election chances now? He's only got one thing he can do, and he's going, uh, right, OK, call Batman. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it ruined our country, bastard? <laughs> Just giving a weather forecast, is it? Rain, occasional cloud, blizzards. <laughs> is it row over Cameron's bedroom? He's already in there, measuring up the curtains. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's actually just found a way to solve the national debt? Is he going, rollover could be billions? <laughs> <laughs> is he going, there's a robin on the corner of the building? <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice yeah, though, if he just that. got Maybe. more distracted by wildlife. That would be quite sweet. He's just trying, trying to draw attention from the polls. No, yeah. no, no, there's a robin on the corner of the building. Uh, it's, a it's a true premise. It's a true premise that your government's in chaos. Is that a chaffinch? Uh, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it what he's going to do on May the 6th? Is it going to be <laughs> removals ordered, cab booked? Right. Would you think the art was something to do with recession? It would, Dara? yes, you would be right. Is it recession do over complete bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> it is not that. You're halfway there, remark. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was lovely, the unemployed people. That's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Poundland. <laughs> is it recession over confirms Brown? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. 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 He always does it that way. Yes, the answer I was looking for was recession over confirms Brown. This is the Prime Minister's cautious announcement of the end of the recession, although he said there is still much more that needs to be done. The Office for National Statistics revealed that this week the economy had grown in the last three months of 2009 by 0.1%. Great day. Great day. Wow. <laughs> Gee, I just started that. How long is that? <laughs> I don't think we expected that. We just thought, like, we expected that. That's what we expected. But that is just like. It is difficult to maintain that. It doesn't matter, but you look like a giddy chameleon. That was amazing. Yeah, we did see the show if a fly goes past. All right, how is Gordon Brown doing and who is he trying to woo at the moment? He's trying to woo the middle classes. He is trying to woo the middle classes. These aren't policies, these are MS policies, don't they? He's going to change his name from Brown to Autumn Blush. <laughs> He's the most unpopular Prime Minister this country's ever had, and yet nobody in the Cabinet thinks they can defeat him in a leadership election. How crap are they? <laughs> yeah, what you're forgetting, I think, that we don't know what goes on in the Cabinet, and everyone's got to remember that he, he, he has got one eye that doesn't work, and perhaps... He would do what I would do if I was him in the cabinets. I'd wear an eye patch. I'd sit there with an eye patch on and I'd have a white cat. <laughs> there is a theory that Brown would pull over the wrong eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, there is, there's also another theory that no one's going to run against Brown at the moment because what's the prize? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, get sure. to lead Labour into an election that will probably lose. It's like going, oh my God, we've hit an iceberg. Can I drive the ship for a while? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> it's like but it's whatever, also... whatever he's thrown at him, he still sort of gets up again. You half expect like Brian Blessed to just pop up every now and again and go, Gordon's alive. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he keeps on saying, I'm getting on with the job. He's like the mill wall of politicians. <laughs> Nobody likes him, but he doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, he's one of those in, he's having a go, and you think, well, that's all right, but you're running the country. It's like if somebody came in and said, look, I'm not a great surgeon, but I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the you know what? I it's, 
basically, the hours in. I've, I've sewn on a button, uh, <laughs> so I, I know I can finish the job. Uh, just, but getting to the stuff, I'm sure, well, I'm sure I'll recognise the kidney when I see it. Uh, <laughs> I've played the ball game. I've played the ball game. Yeah. There's a photograph of him and Darling, actually, uh, which was very interesting, because him and Darling at the same time the announcement. That, interestingly, is the £10 note that tipped us out of the recession. <laughs> so, uh, but the reason why the economy's grown in the last three months is because we had Christmas, isn't it? And people, of course, spend money at Christmas. Yeah, yeah, know? OK. It's yeah, the only right. time people go absolutely mad. You don't see anyone in July going, I need goose fat! Yeah. You know? <laughs> Basically, though, Western capitalism, isn't it? It's based on people buying stuff they don't need with money they don't have, as opposed to Christmas time, when everybody <laughs> buys things nobody needs with money they don't have for people they don't even like. <laughs> It's a beautiful it doesn't mean, by the way, that everyone's... It, like, the recession being over merely means we've ended the phase of becoming poor. Uh, now we just get to enjoy being poor. The problem is that we've still got the same system. We're going back into the same system with the same people running it. It's the same bankers who are rubbish. We thought they could run banks. Turns out they can't. Nick Leeson, we thought he was a... Mm, we thought he was a uh, one-off. Turns out he was a sort of John the Baptist figure. <laughs> 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 a generation of knobheads running, <laughs> running our banks to the ground. And it's the same people who are still in charge. People are still short of cash, aren't they? Which is why people are being encouraged to get all their gold and send it through the post. <laughs> How stupid have you got to be? You wouldn't even put a tenner in a birthday card these days. <laughs> And yet some people are getting some of their most valuable jewellery and putting it in an envelope marked something like, Cash My Gold. <laughs> At some point, their partner, the people go, why, why did you do that? And they said, there was an ad on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> Adverts are powerful things, Dara. I dressed a meerkat up. <laughs> Money, money, Can money. I ask a serious economic question. What yeah. have we been buying that has helped us out of this? Pies. The... Pies. Yes, pies. We've yeah. been eating comfort food, buying comfort food, haven't we? Yeah. Pie, yeah. Loads and loads of pies. Pie buying is at a 30 year high. That is a nightmare for nutritionists, isn't it? All those healthy eating arguments gone out the way. Are you eating your five a day? Yeah, I had steak and kidney. Yeah. Steak. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it must only be in the south. Because, you know, if we ate more pies in the north than we do already, they'd have to invent, like, a breakfast pie. <laughs> <laughs> we've, also, we've also got a little bit cosmopolitan as well. I was up with my mum and dad's because I've been gigging in Liverpool. I've come downstairs for breakfast, and instead of having a normal breakfast, my dad was sat there with a croissant, because my mum's gone all continental. <laughs> and he sat there with this croissant. I just looked at him, he looked at me, he went, yeah, I know. I said, eh... <laughs> I said, what's your croissant like, Dad? He said, it's shit. <laughs> he said, croissants are just empty pasties. <laughs> Actually, the other thing, pies have gone up and lipstick, yeah. bizarrely. Yeah. Well, yeah. A yeah. Weird, and a weird double whammy of people are getting themselves fat, but slightly more attractive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the economy's been propped up by obese, alcoholic chain smokers. You will have to change smoking cigarettes, you know. Smoking causes cancer, but it also stimulates economic growth. <laughs> <laughs> See that school? I paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I did it all. I was doing my bit. <laughs> I was doing my bit. I imagine, I imagine the schooly paper doesn't have very good facilities for sport. Uh, I'm not Just helping, Dara. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not a need. They're, they're going to spend the money on the gym. I said, don't bother. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the government have been getting at fat people for years, and they've got us out of this recession. And they are our only chance if the Chinese do ever decide to jump up and down at the same time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> As soon as we see that tidal wave coming up, you go, fat kids, boom, we sent one back. <laughs> All counts is out around Chicago. Genius. <laughs> so we got one letter back from the Ministry of Defence. <laughs> there was a, a reference in the paper all two weeks ago about why we've got so many obese children and why is it related to what we're doing in the recession and so on. And it came up to the conclusion we've got so many obese children because parents love the kids too much. And because they love the kids too much, they give them fast food because they, that's what they like. And then because we love our kids too much, we won't even let them walk to school in case somebody snatches them. And I, I've got to be honest with you, I've not spoken to many pedos, but I don't think they're into fat kids, you know. <laughs> I know 
that's controversial, but I think let them walk to school every now and again if they get chased. They might shed a few pounds. <laughs> Now we play a round called Mock Up Your Daughters. This game involves Sarah, John, Chris and Andy, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's have our first topic, please. First of it is language. Who wants to come in on that? Chris. Language, apparently, uh, <laughs> was uh, developed by humans to help them during hunting. That's what people will tell you. I don't buy that. I think language is more likely to have developed spontaneously, probably be between a cave couple who were just furious with each other, incandescent with rage, but completely incapable of expressing their emotion, just standing opposite each other in the cave mouth, going, vroom, 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 until something had to give. And one of them finally snapped and went, you prick! <laughs> and went, oh, it's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> Never clean this cave up. This place is a tip. Well, why didn't you say something before? Well, I couldn't, could I? <laughs> You're a pig, you are. My mother warned me about you. Oh, really? How? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bantu, the Bantu uh, languages of uh, the Southern African peoples, they speak with a system of clicks and tuts, this kind of <coughs> using their throat and their tongue and their constantly surrounded by horses they've no need of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare for them. Bantu for go away horse is <coughs> they're screwed. It really, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is home life. Who wants to come that? Sarah. My, um, my home life involves no children. I don't really like children. Uh, and if you ask, uh, most of my female friends don't have kids. If you ask any woman who doesn't have kids what would worry them about having kids, the answer would always be childbirth. So from what I understand of childbirth, it changes your downstairs, doesn't it? <laughs> changes your downstairs. I quite like my downstairs the way it is, thanks very much. Certainly don't want an extension. <laughs> but it's bound to change, though, isn't it? Because you're forcing a person out. That's what you're doing. You're forcing a person out. I've never forced a person out. I've forced a couple in. <laughs> I was in a shop recently and this little boy came running over to me, put his hand in mine and shouted, Mammy! And I thought, oh, sometimes forget me keys, but I think I'd remember that. <laughs> and then his dad came over and I thought, I wonder if this is the best chat-up line ever. And his dad's going to go, no, no, that's not your Mammy. Remember your Mammy left us because my willy's too big. <laughs> well, OK, that leads with Andy and John. The next topic, please. My topic is politics. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we've had the Lib Dems announce their uh, immigration plan. What they like to do is they like to put immigrants into places in Britain which don't, at the moment, have many immigrants. Quite what those parts of Britain will feel about that policy. I grew up for quite a long time in Cornwall, and there they regarded anybody who came from Devon as an immigrant. <laughs> We had one bloke on our street who was known as the Traveller because he'd once been by train up to London. <laughs> and we have a new president for Europe, a man by the name of Herman van Rompuy. <laughs> now, the sun can't wait to get a headline going on this one. Rumpy Pumpy, Rumpy Numpty, Humpty Rumpy. <laughs> They'll go for gold if he gets involved in an affair with a one-legged ugly dwarf. <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy from Rumpy Numpty with Frumpy Stumpy Grumpy. <laughs> well done, Andy Parsons. OK, John, let's see what you've been left with. The topic is fitness. Um, I think as a country, we all know that, that we're not as fit as we used to be. We still sell a lot of sports clothing, though. I'm from Liverpool. If you ever go to Liverpool and you look around at the number of people in tracksuits, you'll think you're in an Olympic village. <laughs> the reality is you've only got to see the size of the tracksuits to know that you're not in an Olympic village. <laughs> and the problem is, is when you invest in some sport and clothes, you feel you've got to do something with them. I bought a brand new pair of running shoes, a brand new pair of shoes that I thought I'll have to do something. One of my mates said, 
why don't you join us? A few of us are doing a 10k race. Never run a 10k before, and when you enter, you've got to put an estimated finish time. I didn't know what to put down. I phoned my mate Sam up. I said, what shall I put down? He said, oh, put 22 minutes. <laughs> I thought, that seems optimistic. I put 24 minutes, I sent the form in. I turned up on the day of the 10K race. I turned up with me mates. I was stood there with an orange number. All my mates had blue numbers. The steward came up to me. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I was uh, thinking of running the race. He said, no, what are you doing back here with all the blue numbers? I said, why? He said, well, you're an orange number. I said, so what? He said, well, if you're an orange number, that means you're an elite athlete. <laughs> He took me to the front, it was me and three Kenyans. <laughs> the man's up. OK, and the round, the points go to Chris and Sarah. <laughs> the next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question <laughs> on the board? There are six categories. Sarah, which category would you like? Oh, uh, entertainment, please, OK, Darren. grand entertainment is the category. The answer is 1.84 billion. What is the question? Is it uh, how many different members of the sugar babes there'll be before they're actually any good? <laughs> <laughs> is it how old would Silvio Berlusconi look if you remove the clip at the back of his head? <laughs> is it... It's positively paleolithic, isn't it? <laughs> is it what were the disappointingly low viewing figures for this week's China's Got Talent? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Is it, is it That's lovely. <laughs> Is it, the, uh, is it the number of pointless things written on Twitter per day? I have eaten an apple. Well done, you. <laughs> is, it, is it how many wombles are living wild in the sewers of London? <laughs> is it? You're closer, is it? You're yeah, closer to a, a womble. Name. You're closer to a womble than any given time in London. That's absolutely true. Yeah, they absolutely. were chased off the common by the Teletubbies. They've gone feral. <laughs> The and the wombles that you see are not indigenous British wombles, they're the American grey wombles. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much did Channel 4 offer Osama bin Laden to appear in Celebrity Big Brother? <laughs> I'm getting on very well with Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> Is it how many stamps Russell Brand has got in his STD clinic rewards card? <laughs> <laughs> if you get it all full, you get AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> like Is it if world's oldest man is 140? How old does his scrotum look? <laughs> <laughs> That's very Is it funny. How many times Madonna has phoned up Brad and Angelina this week asking what's happening to the kids? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go, let's go towards the correct answer. I know oh, the answer. It's to do yeah. with uh, Avatar, isn't it? What is the record for the biggest selling film of all time which it's just overtaken, which was Titanic? Yeah, that's actually... Yeah, yeah, that'll do, yeah. Yeah! 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 More or less, the question I was looking for was, what is the figure in dollars that Avatar passed this week overtaking Titanic to become the biggest grossing film of all time? The film took just 17 days to make one billion dollars. 17 days? 17 days. To make a billion dollars? To make a billion dollars. That's more than I earn in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Just. I haven't seen it because, frankly, I'm ever, I don't like the idea of it. I, it seems to me to be based on the Smurfs. That's... <laughs> now, are you basing that entire opinion on that photograph? No, I think there are two or three things I'm worried about. One, it's about, it seems to be based on the Smurfs. Secondly, they seem to be getting some unobtainable mineral. Don't know. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, they, they have unobtainium. Unobtainium is a bit late. It is genuine. Yeah. We're going to get some unobtainium. It, 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 it's as rare as that'll be handium. Uh, <laughs> 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 I it? wish we had a bit of that, Ian. Is it what we in the UK would call road grit? <laughs> <laughs> it's in rubbish, the, man. Everyone goes, oh, it's the ultimate cinema experience. It's not. Ultimate cinema experience, I watched The Sixth Sense. You know that, the moment, I see dead people. A bloke at the back of the cinema went, that's nothing, mate, I shagged them. That's, <laughs> that's the ultimate cinema experience. That would never be good. I, don't, I think, I think it's impress it is impressive. It's not as difficult as they make out to create, you know, that whole blue population thing. I mean, in fact, it's relatively easy. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Dora, that looks quite normal on you. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> and I actually don't look that... I look like I fit in, you know? I look like... <laughs> I look, I look like Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, they've turned me ginger. You look, which is <laughs> you look like Mr. Tumnus' security. 
Well, it's just advanced colouring in, isn't it? That's exactly it, what it is. It essentially is advanced colouring in, Because yeah. James Cameron apparently has threatened uh, that there'll be two sequels. Oh. He has, yeah. It just feels like that's how, you know, when serial killers sort of taunt the police. <laughs> <laughs> I will strike again. <laughs> no! Look, that was but the best, best thing about, about Titanic, Titanic was the fact there couldn't be a sequel. <laughs> In other news, who has gobbled up Cadbury this week? Kraft. Kraft, yeah. Yes, indeed. Kraft, whose only contribution to human progress so far is the invention of cheese that can also be used as a bookmark. <laughs> so the, the guy who invented Kraft, I think it was like John Kraft or something, his original job with the company built itself, he was a door-to-door -door cheese salesman. Well, actually... Here was someone from another era. Would you ever trust... Ding dong, would you like some cheese? No! <laughs> Walking door to door. I can right? beat that. My mate, when he was younger, used to be a door to door karate salesman. <laughs> <laughs> can he do karate? No, we can't. <laughs> that, that question there could have been answered so many. You could have asked that question any week. Who gobbled up Cadbury's this week? Obviously, this week it's craft. Most weeks it would be sad, lonely women at that uh, sort of. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I'm though. Lonely, wow. you, you I'm might not lonely. And also. <laughs> There is something. See, I, I'm genuinely worried about dairy milk, though, because it. I don't know where I'm. It's my one source of milk. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of a dairy milk. Your bones would be nothing, you know. Like, <laughs> And the news, they kept saying, uh, they just kept saying that uh, Cadbury's had been taken over by an American food giant. I was thinking, you're going to have to be more specific, because about <laughs> half the population of America could technically uh, be described yeah. as yeah. American food giant. Sure, <laughs> you could say that the Jolly Green giant, he's one of yours, isn't he? He's, he's British, you could say that he could defend he's British. British. He's fictional, he's Dara. <laughs> oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> fictional British. So he's green, what would make you think he wasn't one of yours? <laughs> It's more the smugness of them, to be honest. It's more the yeah, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, 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 brune giant. Fuck you, you prick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would be great if, 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 if when Cadbury shuts down, if just a load of umpa lumpers come out of the gate? <laughs> like I was actually shown round the Cadbury's factory. Just said, uh, did uh, Willy Wonka take you? And basically, what happened was, you'd think when you anybody works in a chocolate factory, probably wouldn't be that interested in the product because they're around it 24 hours yeah. a day. I was shown around by four of the largest ladies <laughs> I have ever met, and their job was the milk tray would come on a conveyor belt, and any imperfect ones that came along, they, right, they had to pick them up, and they literally go, "That's not perfect." <laughs> 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 right. And the brilliant thing was, if it wasn't like, if everyone was perfect for about five minutes, they'd just stick their finger <laughs> in one and go, not perfect. <laughs> Can anyone worry about British institutions becoming foreign when the royal family have been German since 1700? <laughs> So a guy called Ray Egan. Ray Egan is the, a retired policeman who stands outside British companies when they're about to be bought uh, in yes. order to protest it, actually, and stands like that, uh, dresses up as John Bull, uh, Kraft. Uh, what I love about that is the fact that he goes, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, and uh, I just hey, Kraft go to hell, but hey, so Kraft will turn, yeah? Go to hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There was this big thing with all the phone debates when people were phoning up complaining and it was a beautiful moment of radio. I don't know if anyone heard it, but there was a woman on the phone saying, it's terrible what they've done, it's terrible that, that we're allowing them to sell a British institution like Cadbury's. And, and the radio presenter, it was Jeremy Vine, he actually said, well, well, are you going to join the calls for a, a boycott of Cadbury's chocolate? She went, oh, I won't go that far. <laughs> My sister bought me a box of 48 bars, the standard size bars of dairy milk for Christmas and I think she thought it would be like one a day and it would last for ages and I just opened it with a kitchen mic. <laughs> <laughs> I did think about putting them all out on the bed and like writhing her own neck and like in this little portal. Don't do that. Never, never mix They're sex hard. and chocolate. And Women really? tend to look like morph. <laughs> okay, get that round the point to the point of the John and Andy. <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject tonight is unlikely things to hear at an award ceremony. Our next award is for most inaccurate weather forecast of the year. Let's look at the 9,000 nominees. <laughs> Welcome to the Islamic Awards for Acting, or as we call them, the Moscas. <laughs> God, well, gosh, so many people to thank. 
Um, where to begin? Uh, obvious one, I suppose. Hitler. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> And the award for best envelope glue goes to. <laughs> <laughs> now, teacher of the year, quieten down. It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> time now for us to celebrate some of the stars of show business who sadly are still with us. <laughs> I'll just open the envelope. Uh, oh, it's full of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and the award for special effects goes to the team behind Gordon Brown's smile. <laughs> and now we're going to watch a film showing some of the people that we've lost this year, including two you didn't even know were dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bang that, I'd bang that, wouldn't bang that, I'd bang that. <laughs> anyway, the award for best actress goes to... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Accident at Work Awards. <laughs> <laughs> and winner of the Suicide Bomber of the Year. I'm afraid they couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> And the winner of the best scientist in physics is... There's no ramp, Stephen Hawkins. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> the next category is things you wouldn't want to hear on a cruise. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to Somali Cruises. <laughs> We've heard reports of an iceberg, but don't worry, no ship has ever been sunk by a lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ryanair Cruises. The following safety announcement is incredibly vital if you want to stay alive. And if you'd like to hear that, that'll be an extra five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we very rarely get any injuries from people playing quoits. You were just unlucky to be sunbathing naked with an erection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we were on this last year when it sunk. <laughs> if you look to your left, there's a man eating squid. After that, he's having chips. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apologise for the rocking of this boat but we are currently being humped by a whale. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to the show. I've got to be honest, it's been a while since I've sung this one. Do you want to be my gang, my gang? <laughs> Welcome to Rita's Erotic Ping Pong Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Two fat ladies, eh, <laughs> On oh, the threes, 33. <laughs> Some hobnobs. <laughs> For those of you gathering on the car deck, I said we would soon be docking, not dogging. <laughs> I'm looking for a really old husband with money. How's your heart? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm in the cabin next to yours. Yeah. Could you be a bit noisy when you're having sex? <laughs> There appears to have been an incident in the swimming pool. If a Mr. Barrymore could contact the captain. Boys go to Chris, Hugh, and Sarah. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, John Bishop, and Russell Howard. Yeah. Yeah. Commiserations to Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis, and Sarah Milliken. Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night. Still an hour of comedy to entertain you here on BBC Two tonight. Rab sees the voice of the people next. Then Paul Whitehouse and Charlie Hickson take on a string of new personas. Bellamy's people at ten. <laughs>